conditional formats are great for highlighting key information and bringing your reports to life. In this video, I've got six hacks that are gonna save you hours of pain when setting up conditional formats, so let's go. As with all my videos, you can download this spreadsheet completely free, no questions asked, just click the button in the description and you can work along and get all of these formats pre-populated for you on a finished sheet. I've got a pretty bog standard Excel report here. We've got budget variants and a last year variance on here. One of the things I don't like about this report is you just cannot see the wood for the trees. It's not obvious where the great results are. It's not obvious where the poor performance is. Let's just sort that out with some instant conditional formatting and show you how quickly you can bring this report to life. So the first thing I'm going to tackle is the versus budget column. I'm just going to highlight that column here and go to the conditional formatting tab. Let's go to put a color scale on it and let's pick this one here so that the top so the biggest numbers are green and the lowest numbers are red so let's do that now you might think well instant result yeah but the problem with this is that there's some positive numbers that are still sort of reddish in color there you go there's a number 77 that's red but rather than abandon that and go down the manual format route we're going to just tweak this by going back to conditional formatting and manage rules when we click on this rule and we click edit we get this box here and the midpoint is set to a 50th percentile. If we just change that to number and it will default to zero and we apply this, so we hit OK and apply, see our 77 is going to a mild green and now we've effectively said that all our positives are going to be green and all our negatives are going to be red and the bigger the negative the redder it is and the bigger the positive the greener it is. So straight away we've got something pretty usable there but we can tweak this even further because what if we say we don't want a thousand to be like red but say 500 to be a kind of pink we want all those negatives to be red because any kind of negative against budget is bad news i want it red so let's just create a number here let's just put a limit so let's just call it bad and we'll put like minus 200 on it at the moment so we've got something that says bad minus 200 if we go back to the conditional formatting now and manage the rule, and as long as we change that to this worksheet here, we'll go back and edit that rule again. You can see that the lowest value is what the minimum is at the moment. But instead of that, let's make it a formula and we'll click in that cell and we'll just click on that there. It's not really a formula, it's literally just link it to that cell and hit OK. And we hit apply. And now what's happened is it's basically set the darkest red color to be minus 200 and therefore it's only going to be like pink or slightly pink or whatever when it's between the zero which we hard coded into the conditional format and the number we put in this cell and if I change this number I'm just going to actually mark this as an input on there like that let's change that to a zero we've now effectively made everything below zero stand out because all of it is going to be the darkest red and we can put any number we like in that, depending on what we think would be a bad result. So maybe minus 500 is where we want to take that so that we can highlight the right amounts of problems in our report. So this report looks okay. We've got a versus budget highlight going on. We can see where the problems are in terms of actual versus budget, but let's do the same thing with versus last year. Are we going to go through the exact same steps again? No, of course not. There's a massive shortcut here. All we need to do is go to manage the rules, click on the rule and note that we need to make sure that we might have to do current selection or this workbook or something like that to get it to appear. Anyway, we duplicate it and then we click in here and we just need to change that to an H. Now note, if you start using the arrow keys, it will start doing all sorts of strange things and it's a bit unpredictable. But if you hit F2, then you can move around inside that cell rather than on the screen and then hit F2 again and you move around the screen. So there's a quick tip there. So I'm going to delete all of that and then just highlight what it is we want. So there's this range here and then we'll apply it to that range and we'll hit OK. Problem we've got now is that we seem to have a lot of red, heck of a lot of red. 
not much green either. And so we might say, well, actually, there's a bit too much going on here. So let's just tweak it ever so slightly again. So we'll go back to the manage rules. We've got this H1 here and we'll edit the rule. Let's get rid of this formula here and just put that back to lowest value and hit OK. That we might think is a bit more reasonable. The number here that I've marked up bad is only working on the versus budget. Imagine you've given this regional sales report to your boss and your boss has come back and said, well, that's kind of good. Yeah, I like it. But on the product report, you highlight like the highest actual sales number. Can you do that the same as you do it on the product report on this report? So you look at the product report and here it is. And you can see that it's highlighting this sort of background green across the whole row. And it turns out that this is a conditional format. Are you going to, you know, go backwards and forwards between the sheets and try and get something that looks like that? Of course you're not. Not now you've watched this video because there is a massive shortcut to doing this. All you need to do is copy any one of these cells that is being highlighted just to be safe. Go to your report, paste on any part of that same sheet and just paste it. And you might think, well, it hasn't done anything. But what it's done is it's added the rule to the worksheet here. And so now what you can do is you can just edit that rule to apply to your new report area. So let's have a look at this rule. Firstly, let's look at the formula. So it's saying D7, and it's using the range from D6 to D23. So that's clearly like not the correct range anymore. So it's probably like the actual cell. So let's make that this one here. And then we'll change that presumably to D5. And we will OK on that. You can see that this says that it applies to J7, which is no good. We need it to apply to the entire report. So let's apply it to the entire report and hit apply. You notice when I hit apply, you probably didn't notice, it changed our formula. It changed it to D3. Now, the reason for that is that because I changed the area it applied to, it's tried to match the formula towards it. So just need to be careful of that. So actually, we need to re-edit that and put that back to a 5 and hit OK and apply. And look at that. It's working. It's picked up the highest sales number as Greater Manchester. What it's done is put it on top of the formatting of the variances. So that's easy to correct. Back to manage rules. And we just need to say that we want to look at the whole workbook. And we're going to put it underneath the other formatting rules. Hit apply. And that's corrected that as well. Trust me, that is a lot easier than setting up that entire rule from scratch and working out what the formula should even be in the first place. You've gone back to your boss. They've said, wow, this is looking good. Not sure I like the italics on that highlight, though, for the highest uh, sales number. Can you just get rid of the italics? OK, you say no problem. Right. How are you going to do it? You can go to manage the rules and it's provided you were like in that area there. It should come up. If not, just click on this worksheet to see it and edit the rule. And if you click on the format button, you'll see on the font tab that it's a bold italic. Now, it's very tempting, you might say, to click regular and hit OK. Now, if I do that, which I'm going to do now, you can see it's got rid of it. That might look like it's worked. But what it's effectively done is forced a conditional format of normal text, but it's also forced some other aspects of the font that you might not want. So for example, if you want to make that red, you click on red and you think, well, hold on, what's it? it's not changing color. What's the matter with this? And why is that? It's because in the rule, let's just go to edit rule uh, format. You see, we've deliberately said we want the color to be automatic and the font style to be regular. Whereas what we should have done is to hit the clear button on this format. And what that does when you hit that clear button, it basically says that this aspect 
of the format, so in this case the entire font, everything about the font is not being applied in this conditional formatting at all. So it will not overwrite anything you do on the spreadsheet. So this is a key point that I think a lot of people don't realize about conditional formatting, that it sits on top of standard cell formatting. And if you start clicking things like this, regular, or, or anything, you know, you, you choose the particular font or whether it's underlined or whatever, that will apply on top of anything that you've set in that cell already. And so you will not see any cell formatting if you touch this. And the way around that, hit this clear button and it basically says, I'm going to ignore the font completely when I apply this conditional format. So as soon as I hit OK and OK and apply, you'll see it goes red because it's revealed the underlying format of that font which was red text that I set a moment ago so I now can change that to any color I want and you can see it's sort of changing here so that is the proper way to remove font formatting out of your conditional formats we've got our regional sales report oh I think I've forgotten to put the West Midlands in it so we need to add the West Midlands into this report so here's our data. I'm just going to copy and paste this onto this report. Now, this is what not to do. So I'm going to put it down here. Let's uh, take these conditional formats here. We'll go to the Format Painter and we'll paint them on there. OK, so that's worked. And then I'm going to insert that. I'm going to hold down Shift and the arrow key. So that will allow us to move it around into the right place here. There we go, and it's correctly picked up that Staffordshire is now the biggest actuals number and highlighted that whole row. So on the face of it, everything looks great. Fantastic, you might think. But actually, you've caused yourself a problem that you're probably not even aware of. And if this is left unchecked and allowed to continue, you end up with a very slow spreadsheet. What am I talking about? Well, you've duplicated your conditional formats. If I change that to this worksheet, you'll see that we now have four versions rather than two of the heat map. Instead of just the budget and the last year ones, we have kind of a bit of a mess, really. So that leaves us in a pickle that we now need to sort out. And why do we need to sort out? Because, like I said, if this carries on, you can end up with literally hundreds of these over time and that will dramatically slow down your spreadsheet and make it really difficult when you want to change anything but if somebody now says oh actually i want to change the shade of red or the shade of green you've got to change it in two places well two's not so bad but what if there's 20 of these or something the only way around it is to just pick what you think will look like the right value so you can see that this is working on column f and it's going from five to ten then a gap and 17 to 51 so you could just say i'm going to get rid of that gap there like that and it's very fiddly and you put a colon in if you push f2 you can use the arrow keys and the shift keys to highlight stuff it makes it a bit faster so let's apply that and then delete the rules that you no longer need and hit ok so that is fiddly so <laughs> The best advice here is do not get in that pickle in the first place. What should you have done? So I'm going to remove the West Midlands from the sheet. And this time I'm going to insert somewhere in the middle roughly the right amount of rows. Now I could insert a lot more rows. That's safer. Certainly don't want to insert too few. So Control Shift Plus and then go and get your data. So this is your extra data and drop it as a paste special value into the gap that you've created. That will automatically pick up the formats of the underlying sheet, and then you can just delete any empty rows. That's what you should do. That will not mess up conditional formats, and it will keep your spreadsheet clean and fast running. Just to reiterate, do not use the Format Painter for conditional formats other than to intentionally create a duplicate conditional format in your list. Now we've got this pretty well highlighted and conditionally formatted sales report, but it's still like a little bit confusing. 
you think, do you know what would be better is put some data bars on the budget variance because that will sort of instantly highlight where the problems are. I'm going to insert a column here to put the data bar on. And what I'm going to do is make it equal the versus budget column. And I'm going to copy that formula all the way down there like that. And you can see it's picked up the format from the left hand side, which is a bit annoying. You don't want that. If we go to manage rules, you can see that we've gone, we picked up column G. Now I click in there, push F2 again, it makes it easier. You can just use the arrow keys to go around. I'm just going to replace that with F, hit OK, and that gets rid of that. Now I want to change this into a data bar. So I'm going to highlight the whole thing and change it to a data bar. And I'm going to pick this one here, green. Now we've got a very quick result there, but it looks a bit of a mess, doesn't it? First off, there's all these numbers clattering it up that we don't need. But secondly, and I might be being a bit of a perfectionist, but that red does not match the red of the heat map. And it would be great if it matched. Let's sort that out. So we'll go to conditional formatting, manage the rules, and we'll edit the data bar. So show data bar only. Perfect. We'll tick that. That sorts that one out. Negative values. Right, there's our red. OK, let's match it. Ah, how are we going to match it? Are we going to faff about trying to find the exact colour match using our eyes or maybe putting in hash codes or something? No, no, no. We don't need to do that. Let's just hit OK on all of this. Fantastic shortcut here. Very little known. If we go to conditional formatting and manage the rules and let's find one that's got the actual red we need. So this one, this will do. We click on edit. We find the colour. We click on it, we click more colours. We don't do anything other than that. We just hit OK and OK again. And what that's done is it's added that colour to the recent colours list. So now when we go into our data bar and edit it, and we click on here to get the colour, you can see our recent colours, and there it is. There's our colour, rose. So we can match that exactly, or apply that, so all our colour schemes match on the report. There you have it, six hacks to drastically shortcut your conditional formatting pain. Put in the comments any other hacks that you think that you've got because I'd love to hear all about them. And always remember there's a template with every one of my videos. You can download it for free, no questions asked, and you get all these formats pre-built into this spreadsheet for you. In the next video, we'll be adding dynamic borders using conditional formatting that will help separate out the report that will stand additional data coming in or data disappearing from the report and even sorting the report in different orders without having to do anything to manually change borders around cells. So definitely come and join me for that and I'll see you in that video soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.